All the portraits you see on the screen now were photographed using daylight that's filtered through a window. The style of light is going to be influenced by the position of your window in relation to your model. Now there is a number of ways that you can do this. You can have daylight directly behind you and that's going to create a flat even lighting. You can have daylight that's positioned to the side of the model and that will create more contrast in your image and give you the face shape and definition. You can also have daylight or window light directly behind your model and you can manipulate how you expose for that light to get the desired results or you can have a combination of all three where you have daylight behind your model and then daylight flooding in in front of your model and that's going to change the look and feel of your image. There's three important factors that are going to determine how your portrait looks and they are the quality of your light and that is whether your light is hard light or soft light. The direction of your light and so that's where your light source is placed in relation to your model and finally the amount of fill light and that's the light that is reflected and into back into your portrait and that controls the contrast of your image. The quality of the daylight that you get through window light is determined by the position of the sun in relation to the windows and also whether the sunlight is going through the windows directly or whether it's reflected light and also the how contrasty or soft the light is is also going to be determined by whether it's an overcast day outside or whether it's a bright sunny day outside. Direct sunlight coming straight through the windows is going to give you a really hard light that looks and high contrast light that looks much like uh, using say a speed light. If you've got daylight that's diffused by clouds so it's a softer uh, more filtered light then coming through the windows it's going to give you a much softer quality to your light and a lower contrast much like using a softbox. The best kind of lighting is where you have light that is coming from outside but it's not directly coming through the window it's more of a filtered light so it might be the, that the sun is higher in the sky and it's coming down and it's bouncing off say the concrete outside the window and then filtering in through the windows and that's got some direction and a bit of edge to it but it's also soft at the same time and that's kind of the, the best lighting to uh, and the easiest lighting uh, to work with for portraits. Now you can change the quality of the light by adding fill light. Fill light reduces the contrast of an image. So in this image on the screen now you can see that it's lit by window light from coming in from the side. So it's a high contrast image and fill light is just light that is reflected back into the image to reduce the amount of contrast or add fill to fill in those shadows and then you reduce the contrast and you're left with a much flatter looking image. So whether you're going to shoot high contrast or lower contrast depends on the model you're shooting and the look that you're trying to achieve. If you want something moody, then you want to go with a higher contrast of lighting. If you want something that looks a lot flatter, then you want to have a lower contrast of lighting. As a general rule, I prefer to shoot my female models with lower contrast or a flatter, more even light because it's a lot more flattering. And I shoot my male models with a higher contrast light or less fill light and 
You can also work with something in between if you want to sculpt the face. So you don't need to have the extremes of high contrast or very low contrast. You can have something in between which adds shape and definition to the person that you're photographing. So there's three really important factors that are going to influence how your final image looks. Firstly, the position of the light in relation to your model. Secondly, the proximity of the light in relation to your model. And finally, the amount of fill light in relation to your key light, which is your main light. So in this example on the screen now, you can see I've got my model in the middle of the room and I have a window position camera left. If I wanted to create split lighting, like high contrast lighting, what I would need to do is bring my model closer to the light source. This always sounds counterintuitive because you would think that the closer you are to the light source, the sort of the more light there is. But the reason that you will get increased contrast when you bring your model closer to the light source has to do with something called the inverse square law. So the inverse square law is a law of physics that is basically, and I'll probably butcher this, but very basically it's one over the distance traveled from the source times the distance traveled by the source or squared. Now, that all sounds very confusing and what does this have to do with uh, lighting and photography? Put basically, you don't have to remember the formula, just remember the following. The closer your subject is to the light source, the faster the light drops away. If you want to create a high contrast portrait such as split lighting, move the light closer to your subject or your subject closer to the light source if you're using daylight. If you want a portrait with flatter, more even lighting, move your subject away from the light source or if you're using artificial lighting, move the light source away from your subject. The final factor that's going to influence your lighting is how much fill light your portrait has. Now, with a daylight filled room like this example here, if you have darker walls in the room, there's going to be less fill light. And the reason for that is there's going to be less light bouncing around. So light comes in through the window. And if you've got dark walls, it's not going to reflect light back into the room. If on the other hand, you're working in a, a room that ha it, it's all painted white, then you're going to get a lot more um, ambient light being bounced back onto your model. So if you're trying to create a moody portrait and your walls are painted white and you might have a smaller room, then you can do the opposite of adding fill and you can subtract light. And the way to do that is to add a cutter, which is some black card or a black reflector. And what that's going to do is it's going to reduce the amount of light bouncing around the room. So a couple of things, you can move your light, move your model closer to the light source. And if you're still not getting a good split lighting because you've got that light bouncing around the room, then bring in a black card or a black cutter opposite the light source and that's going to reduce the amount of light in the room. Now, if you want to recreate this kind of lighting using flash, the principle is exactly the same. Whatever light source you're using, just make sure it's very, very close to your model. So it could be you can you can achieve the result with an umbrella. It'll work with a naked speed light, uh, a softbox, all the same. You just need to make sure that your light source is close to your model. You can also adjust the ratio. So 
how much contrast is in your image by adding fill light. So the fill light could be from a reflected source, from, from a silver reflector or a white reflector or a gold reflector, or your fill light could be another light. So you could have your main light at full power and your fill light could be at half power and, that, and you can play with those ratios just by adjusting the settings of your light. So you get your main light set first and then add your fill. But to start off with, I would recommend that you start out with one light, bring it very close to your model, and then if you want high contrast, you can leave it at that and just let the shadows fall off. If you want to add a little bit more detail into the shadows, then you can bring in a reflector. A silver reflector is going to give you uh, much more detail than a white and a gold reflector is going to also add the color tone, the a warmer tone to your image. Rembrandt lighting is a style of lighting named after the 15th century Dutch painter called Rembrandt. <laughs> so basically Rembrandt was this amazing painter from the 1600s who used to paint portraits using a single window light to the side of his model and he'd position the model at a certain angle that would create this triangle of light under the eye in the shadow side of the face. This was his signature style. This is probably the most flattering of all of the classic lighting styles because it adds a three-dimensional look to the model's face. The only difference between split and Rembrandt is the slight shift in position of the light, which creates slightly more detail in the shadow and, of course, the triangle. Just like with split lighting, the contrast between the shadow side of the face and the highlight can be increased or decreased using fill light or reflectors. Rembrandt lighting is created in exactly the same way as split lighting. The only difference is the position of the light. The light source is higher than it would be for split lighting. So if you've got a model that's in lit by window light, then what you would do is you, if you want a higher contrast, move your model closer to the light source. If you want a softer, less, more fill light in your image, move your model away from the light source. Then if you're using window light, you'll need to block out the bottom two thirds of the light. So the only light source is coming from above the model. If you're working with artificial lighting, such as flash or continuous lighting, you'll need to position your light slightly above your model and at a 45 degree angle. And you can tweak this slightly, change the angle and just look for that triangle on the face. Again, you can work with reflectors to either in to increase the amount of fill or work with cutters to decrease the amount of fill.